relationships, let's all talk more about the, the history of Haiti's debt, which is really fascinating, actually, in the way in which debt has been used as a uh, tool of control over Haiti from, it, from its very roots, from, its, from, from the, the, the revolution and independence, and yet being indebted to France right from the word go. Um, my kind of knowledge of Haiti's debt is, is the kind of, you might say, the second wave, the, the 20th century build-up of debt, um, when uh, debt was, when loans were kind of pushed on to many developing countries um, cheaply and without much regard to where they were going, what they were being spent on, and um, those that indebtedness, Haiti's indebtedness, has uh, enabled neoliberalism to take hold because in exchange for the loans, Haiti would then have to sign up to certain conditions like, for example, the trade liberalization conditions, removing the tariffs, removing the subsidies. Um, it would have to cut its spending on things like public health care and education. Um, and um, although um, there was a, a kind of a wash of loans and, um, and debt, creating in the in say the 1960s and 70s by the 80s uh, there was a completely different macroeconomic situation um, and I was thinking about this in in parallel to what we're seeing at the moment with the the crisis that we have at the moment and what you saw there a couple of years ago with lots of money sloshing around and investors wanting to make as big a return as they could for their investments so they were lending cheaply they were lending to poor people for mortgages, for example, and they were then selling on the loans in these magical, mysterious derivatives that we've all come to hear so much about. Um, and then the whole thing um, collapsed, and, and the poor people at the bottom of the heap were left without homes, um, and it's certainly not the rich investors who are, who are really suffering the consequences of the global economic crisis. Now, similarly, in the 1970s and in late 70s with the recession, and, and again, a big global economic collapse. Um, it wasn't the rich that, that really saw um, the, the, mo the most damaging impacts of that crisis. It was the poorest. And what we saw in terms of those poor countries who's ha who'd had these loans pushed on them in a similar kind of a way was that then the interest rates massively increased and the terms of repayment completely changed. So restructuring those debts meant having to sign up to these neoliberal programs throughout the 1980s and 1990s. So we saw a situation where Haiti was forced into this neoliberal path um, in order to keep, in order to increase its exports to make a little bit of foreign exchange in order to service the debts. And so you have this spiral, this trap then that Haiti, and as I say, many, many other developing countries are caught in where they have to go down, they have to put on the neoliberal straitjacket in order to um, in order to just keep on on track with something of their debt repayments. Um, just to mention Haiti's debts, the a bulk of them, a chunk of them, were cancelled. Um, that finally came through at the very end of June this year, um, which is really exciting and excellent news, and I think another sign of hope for us. Um, today because you know that releases funds for um, for Haiti to determine a little bit more of its own future a little bit more of its own public spending um, I have to say I was the, the reaction is bittersweet I'm just going to read a little quote if I may from um, the IMF the International Monetary Fund another one of these institutions we didn't hear that much about which is absolutely central to this story. Um, they are the ones that, that lend money to countries in crisis and put on a lot of these conditions along with the World Bank. Um, and when Haiti received its debt cancellation at the end of June, uh, the mission chief for Haiti, Karim <coughs> Delectat, said, Haiti is a land of opportunity if you're an entrepreneur and an investor. It's a golden moment for Haiti to start investing in export capacity, particularly in textiles. As we've seen, they import everything. There's nowhere in the Caribbean where the tariffs are so low, where the local market is not protected. We all build our wells on protecting our markets. We all were peasant societies originally, right? And people in Haiti have been forced into the slums. So the Haitian government needs to be forced to protect its market, and you know the international institution have to uh, accept that you know the, the Haitian state needs to protect its producers in order to build 
you know, a properly functioning society because as we've seen very powerfully in the film, it's a cool de sac. The factory uh, economy is an absolute cool de sac. And those are, I think, the important debates to be had. But Haitians have to have these debates. Haitians have to build accountable structures. And now, having what uh, Sarah pointed out, that we have this um, uh, uh, debt cancellation, that means roughly by our calculations about $50 million that the Haitian government cannot play with, uh, as it were. I mean, I don't like the word play, but <laughs> use it responsibly. I fear they might play with it, right? So use it responsibly. And that is a very big test, you know, and everybody's watching. Some of the things that we could think about are, for example, the release of this fund, um, $50 million a year. So that's $50 million they're saving in debt service payments through this debt cancellation package. You know, what are the gov what's Haiti going to spend that on? Other governments have spent it on, for example, abolishing fees for, for primary school that we heard so much about the negative impact of in Haiti where women just can't afford to send their children to school. Or um, user fees for health clinics is another one that's happened in, in rural Zambia directly as a result of debt cancellation in Zambia. Um, could, a, could we campaign here, could we help women and, and, and groups in Haiti to campaign for their government to spend the proceeds of debt relief in those ways that will make the most impact on, on their lives and on their families' lives? And, and we need to find ways to say to our government that the ways in which they are currently supporting um, repression in Haiti the way in which they are allowing the traditional classes of oppressors to continue to operate in, 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 in that place and not on.